Well, joining me now is Lord Jonathan Marland, a former trade envoy to the Prime Minister. Uh, Jonathan, I know Boris Johnson once or twice said, oh, well, it's all about taking back control. It's not about numbers. But let's be honest, Brexit voters and 2019 Conservative voters expected fewer people to come into this country, didn't they? Mm. Well, the whole thing is immensely frustrating and, you know, no one more frustrated than you. You're yeah. the professor of Brexit. Yeah. Um, I, I think that uh, it, being a government minister now, trying to pull the levers of power is uh, really tough. Uh, you're being let down by most institutions in the country who are failing to run the country properly. Willfully failing when it comes to Brexit? Well, you can slightly think, can you not? You could conceive that perhaps let's all get together in the Whitehall Civil Servants Club and decide it will stop the will of the people because we don't think it's right. And uh, you slightly feel there's that going on and there is real frustration, I suspect, as we've seen from the recent announcement by Kemi Badenoch that she can't rescind these laws that we've triumphed as being the way out of Brexit. But I, I think uh, there's no point looking at the past, as you know as well as I do. We must look to the future. Well, yes, but, to, and, but, and, but and, Jonathan, it's seven years since that referendum. It's yes. a fair moment to take stock. No, Nigel, you're not wrong. I, I'd never disagree with you on anything, but, well, lots, a few things I'd disagree with you on. <laughs> <laughs> on this particular thing, I, I defer yeah. to you. I mean, the fact is there have been lots of different headwinds. The main headwinds have been, I think, obduracy within the... Levers of government within the blob, as it's called, okay. and I think also COVID. But let's can I can let I just... me accept that point. Let okay. me accept that point. Right. But strong government with strong leadership yep. would overcome that. It it can to a certain extent, but if the forces are all aligned against you, and I've been in government, and mm. I remember when when we came in the coalition, I was minister for energy and climate change. We decided we were going to get rid of thirty percent of all the rules. The first ten percent is a doddle. Most of them are redundant. They're defunct. useless. Yeah. You then have to push water uphill okay. and more water uphill to persuade not only the civil service that these are the wrong rules that have been in place, but also you've got to persuade Parliament. So it's a tough act. Let, but that's one side. Let's look to the future. I think for Brexit to work, Sunak has got a real opportunity. He's got to get a grips with this immigration issue, which has been bubbling for a long time and succeeding government. Which the civil service are not obstructing. This is purely where they set the levels for skilled migrants to come to Britain from all around the world is purely a government, not a blob decision. Uh, it's a bit of both, but we, I'm not, we, let's not argue about that. He's got to do something about that. He's got to really get rid of a lot of this red tape and regulation, which is killing us. It's meaning the city's losing jobs, as you've enunciated, with the fishermen, with people across the country. They're fed up with this regulation that's suffocating the country. We've got to be 10% more competitive than our competitors in regulation and in tax. And at the moment, it's completely the reverse. So this country is in a very bad place. It's got... The lever of government, very difficult to pull. You've got an uncompetitive tax regime. You've got an uncompetitive regulation regime. And uh, you've therefore got the situation that you and I both remember, because we're a similar age for viewers who didn't know that, <laughs> uh, even though he looked so much younger. Um, we're back in the situation of the 70s, where we have uh, a government that's obsessed with process, or the levers of government obsessed with process, and now we need delivery. And until that is changed... The country's in a very... If I'm a Red Wall voter, I come from a Labour voting family traditionally, yeah. but I did vote UKIP, I did vote Leave, I did vote for Boris in 2019, and I really thought that pressures on housing, pressures on the health service, pressures on the roads and transport and travel, that much of this country was at breaking point because of a population explosion. Mm. It is now much worse than it was before 2019. What's going to make me vote Tory next year? Is there anything? Well, I think those fundamental... I think Rishi's five pledges are going to... And if he delivers on them, then I think the country as a whole will say, look, I'm up against Starmer, who's a social democrat. I'm up against Davy, who's a social democrat. And I've got a current Conservative Party, which is social democrat. Uh, yes. I've, I've got to... But at least I will vote for that one because he has delivered on those promises. If he does. If he does. If he doesn't, then obviously well, he will, <laughs> he will uh, have the wrath of the voters and, uh, and deservedly so. So uh, I think uh, that's what will happen. But this country is not going to change until 
the focus is on delivery rather than this endless process that we have become obsessed well, with. Well, somewhat pessimistic, Lord Jonathan Marlon there, but honest.